Hello Pisces, welcome to your August monthly horoscope for the Sun or the Ascendant. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. Also, if you'd like to chat with me directly, you can do so on Twitter at Horoscope Ace, or please join Elisa and I for our daily astrology and tarot video show, which is proving great fun. Please see the link beneath this video. You can also grab your free written daily horoscope. But I give the dominant astrological influence of each day, and Elisa gives a more spiritual uh, perspective. And it is proving really popular, so do please come along. Finally, if you'd like to ascend above your zodiac sign and embrace more serious astrology, you can check out my very affordable range of horoscope reports underneath. There's a 30% off for a 12 month forecast and a character analysis, or see my testimonials if you'd like to enjoy a one to one consultation with me. So here we are, welcome. The sun is in the sign of Leo as we start the journey of this month. The sun loves being in Leo. This is the sign that it governs. And for you, this is about health and fitness, diet, organization, work, sacrifices, where you like to provide services to people. It can be about animals. It can be about aunts and uncles. So the sixth house is pretty diverse. But having the sun there is very empowering for you because it can help you to make some improvements. If you have been locked in, like many of us for COVID, for example, and are able to venture out and be a bit more active, a great time to be so. But there is a full moon on the third in the sign of Aquarius, the sign that precedes yours. So in your particular zodiac uh, story, the sign of Aquarius is your 12th house of secrets, potentially of enemies, just being honest, and also of anxieties. It's the subconscious, the 12th house. So what does this full moon say for you? Well, it does say that if you have been feeling in any way, shape or form a little bit under par, then don't necessarily just try to legislate it in a practical way. Don't be open, in other words, to the fact that you may be uh, in some ways feeling a little bit less than 100 percent in terms of your emotions, your spiritual uh, um, connectivity and don't be hung up about it if that's the case but this particular full moon does clash with Uranus so a lot of electric energy is going to be pulsing around you in the first couple of weeks of this month and if you just know that that is because it's about finding the balance between the emotional psychological and spiritual with the more physical and practical and you just need to be aware that Uranus is pushing for change which we can go with or we can resist, that will help you to be more at peace with any electrifying energy you may be experiencing. Now Mars is now in your sector of resources and will be through till early January next year. Also your sector of self-worth and that's clashing with Jupiter in your sector of friendships. If there is somebody in the first 10 days that you're impressed by, don't try to impress them with a grand gesture. It's important to be orientated towards people you trust this month, not who you would like to admire you. Stick to the people that you know are the straight dealers for you, the people who are genuine and sincere. It's really important for you because I think your value system, your higher values could come into uh, some choppy waters this month particularly around how you earn a living. For example, if you are a particularly idealistic Pisces person, you may have to adjust to the reality or the new reality of COVID, and that may be having some impact on you, of course, like the rest of us. So if you're very fixed in your ideas about what you want to achieve in terms of your longer term plans, then that could see you getting a bit stressed out or come into conflict with other people. Now, Mercury moves on the 5th of this month into the sign of Leo too. 
Now, of course, for you in the sign of cancer, it's magical. It's about self-expression. It still went through a retrograde. It's still not at its best in cancer. So moving into Leo brings more fire to the way that you want to structure things and use details positively. If you are a little bit of a dreamy Pisces, which sometimes can be the case, uh, Mercury moving into this area can be really helpful. If you're someone who's very well uh, organised and joined up, maybe you can use Mercury in this area to look at things like nutrition, drill down a bit deeper to make some more fine-tuned adjustments, which can actually be very helpful to you. Now, on the 7th, a truly magical event occurs because Venus, which has gone through a long transit in quite a reflective part of your situation from the 4th of April, emerges into the sign of Cancer. And this is great for you. This is much warmer, much more outgoing. This is lovely. Venus here can really see you wanting to meet up with the people you really feel comfortable with, but particularly from the 20th and the 22nd, when Mercury and the Sun move into your sector of relating. Now at the heart of this month, the 11th through to the 21st, the Sun forges a brilliant angle to Mars. So if you really can focus on the details, narrow your efforts in a very precise and thorough and very um, very focused way, you can be so productive, you could work so jolly hard, so use that to your advantage. Uranus does go into retrograde on the 15th in your third house of thinking. I think that just suggests if you did take in loads of new thoughts and ideas, since Uranus is pitched up here full time, then maybe it's time to review some of them or perhaps continuing to sift over the conditioning that you were given as a child. Your core values can change with Uranus here quite dramatically. Now the f new moon of the 19th can give you a huge burst of energy which takes you through to the middle of September. Embrace it. As long as you narrow your focus down, there's so much you can achieve in the interim. But it is true in the last 10 days of this month that Mars is clashing with Saturn. And you could feel quite frustrated if things aren't going about your future, your friendship circle, or even about money as quickly as you would like. There may be some politics right at the heart of this month that you need to go through. But I feel that once Mercury and the Sun emerge into Virgo, it is going to be like a shaft of sunlight. You're going to see the way forwards in a much more meaningful way. Also, they both angle up magnificently to Jupiter and Pluto as this month draws to a close. And that can give you the insights you need to unlock any challenges or frustrations that may manifest. But it is true to say that Venus, the planet of love, is in an opposition to Pluto as the month draws to a close. Anything to do with Venus and Pluto always fascinates me because when, you, um, when these are in a helpful angle, a sextile or a, a trine, sometimes in the conjunction, but more ordinarily in the sextile or trine, they're very enabling in terms of how can us to recognise where we have very meaningful bonds. When they're in the opposition or square, and sometimes the conjunction, there's often some kind of politics linked to money or sex or an affection. And so someone could... Uh, offer an idea or invite you out on a date if it's possible where you're living or kind of cosy up to you um, and it could be all absolutely perfectly legitimate and fine but equally often leverage is involved when Venus and Pluto are a bit tense with one another so just be conscious of that conscious of your own motives and those of anyone you encounter but that aside you could enjoy having a fabulous attraction to someone as this month draw, draws to a close and as long as you're conscious of what the potential downside might be and the catches are and the gotchas you could actually have a really sultry encounter that really makes your pulse race and sometimes life is for living not worrying and that's up to you to decide but for now stay safe Pisces take care good luck and goodbye